This is the muscular leg model. On your lab guide, it is noted LP for leg pelvis model. We're gonna start at the top where the hip is located. The leg pelvis model allows us to see both arteries and veins. So we'll go through both of those. At the very top, this is the common iliac artery, which gives rise to the external iliac artery and the internal iliac artery. The internal iliac artery supplies blood to the organs within the pelvis. The external iliac artery continues on past the inguinal ligament to become the femoral artery. And this is where we have one of our clinical applications. This is a clinical landmark. The inguinal ligament, the sartorius muscle, and the adductor longus create a triangle. All of those are borders around these three structures, the femoral vein, the femoral artery, and the femoral nerve. In the event that there was a laceration or an amputation below the triangle, we could easily apply pressure to these blood vessels to stop the bleeding. The femoral nerve can also be used as a nerve block. So in the event that there's an amputation or serious injury to the leg and the lower limb, we can apply a nerve block there to block pain from going back to the spinal cord and back to the brain. The femoral artery continues underneath the, the quadriceps group. The femoral artery becomes the popliteal artery on the posterior side of the knee. This then transitions into the posterior tibial artery. The post-tibial artery gives rise to the anterior tibial artery and the fibular artery. The anterior tibial artery goes around to the front and runs alongside the tibia. The fibular artery is underneath the fibularis muscles. And the posterior tibial artery continues down the backside of the leg proper. The femoral vein travels deep alongside the femoral artery. It also goes to the posterior side of the leg and it becomes the popliteal vein. This is the muscular arm model. On your lab guide, it's notated AMA. -A. We're gonna start at the shoulder. This is the axillary artery. It gives rise to an artery that surrounds the head of the humerus called the circumflex humoral artery. After we pass that branch, the artery turns into the brachial artery and continues down the brachium. The brachial artery will give rise to the radial artery after passing the elbow. It will continue as the radial artery all the way down to the thumb. The brachial artery will also branch off into what is called the ulnar collateral artery and then giving rise to the ulnar artery that goes down to the small finger of the hand.